It's wonderful. Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Court Council today, the 2nd of August. Uh, firstly, a brief health and safety introduction. We are not expecting a fire drill, but if the alarm does sound, please make your way to the nearest fire exit. The emergency exit at the back of the chambers will take you across the roof and down the fire escape. Uh, take care, as this may be slippery if wet. <laughs> or you can exit the way you enter the building through the police station and out of the front door. If it is not possible to get to an exit, then the lift lobby is a safety zone in event of a fire. Under no circumstances should the lift be used. Please make sure that all mobile phones and devices are switched off while on silent, please. Any individual wishing to video or audio record the meeting may do so. I must inform you that this meeting has been videoed by the Council and will be uploaded to the Council's YouTube channel. Please remember anyone wishing to speak in the public participation part of the meeting should raise their hand and wait for me as Chair's gesture for you to speak. You will be given a maximum of four minutes to make a representation which should be aimed at me as Chair. Please state the agenda item which you will be speaking about. Through me as Chair, Council members or officers may then respond to your point if necessary. You will, you will not automatically be able to reply unless I as Chair allow you to do so. The full public participation policy and other health policies are available from the document holder uh, in the public gallery. To all present, please remember to show respect to others in the meeting and avoid interrupting where possible to enable others to follow the meeting. Anyone present felt to be behaving unacceptably will be excluded from the meeting by the chair. Any member of the public looking to leave the meeting should wait for the council officer to escort them out of the building. Thank you. Um, first of all, um, I'd like to welcome James Jenkins, uh, our new Deputy Young Mayor, and I uh, hope uh, you enjoy your year as Deputy Young Mayor. Thank you. Um, my um, chaplain is, um, is still uh, recovering from uh, a life-threatening illness, so uh, before we start, can we just have a, a, a moment of silence, please? Councillor Vaughan and Councillor Latham and Councillor Burchett, also Councillor Adeniji who may attend, he's been called out of work suddenly. Okay. Item 2, disclosure of interest. To deal with any disclosure by members of any disclosable pecuniary interest, and interest other than pecuniary interest, as defined under the Seaboard <coughs> Town Council Code of Conduct, and the Localism Act 2011 in relation to matters on the agenda. Mm -hmm. no? okay. Item 3, public participation. To deal with any questions or brief representations from members of the public in accordance with Standing Order 3 and the Seaboard Town Council policy. Thank you. So, Good evening, Madam Mayor and Councillors. Certainly, it's a bit more she doesn't fail me. Uh, this is to do with the clerk's report. I'm delighted to read that our force has stayed as a success. I was unable to stay there very long because it's exceptionally hot, not like last year. 
This ties with the problem we have in the White Island Fields and other open spaces, a lack of freely available tap water. It was sad to see mass distribution of single-use plastic bottles of water and the litter they created, especially since Seaford wants to become a plastic-free town. I'm asking for a strategy to put in, to put in place to rectify this. We have been told already that the Bonnie Smith standpipe will not immediately be available to the general public and that eventually there will be maybe a water fountain in the Martello toilets. The latter are apparently very expensive and have hygiene issues of flow, all of which I've heard a lot more about since I asked about them several months ago. For example, what they're putting into the skateboard, the skate park at Lewis and New Haven. May I suggest a cheap solution which has been adopted by Horsham District Council? Where a simple tap with a push down top that's installed in the park. This enables those higher in the fields to use water as, it, as well as it, rather than just relying on bottles. So that could be useful. And I'll email a photo of that to Tony Jackson to explain further. The second thing is that, as many of you know, the official launch of Leafville Safety in Lake New Haven takes place on September 1st between 11 and 2, based at Frankie's Beach Cafe. Our main sponsor is South East Water and they'll be sending all the councillors official invitations, so we do hope you'll come along and support it. There's going to be musical entertainment from the Bleak Sisters and activities for children. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good evening, council members, Madam Mayor. Um, I'd like to raise some questions relating to paragraph 127 of the Clark's report, which relates to the neighbourhood plan. Um, in the report, we say it looks highly likely that the second regulation of all team will have to be followed. Can I ask what is the reason for that process to be repeated? Um, is it due to the fact that the council anticipate the need to make significant changes to the draft government plan following the responses received after the earlier regulation of all team consultation? And if so, what might those significant changes be? Um, in, the, in that paragraph, the town clerk also says uh, it's also looking likely that the next stage, Regulation 70, I think that's possibly an error of the provision of Regulation 60, uh, will not be allowed to progress until the day by the project research is complete to ensure it is a viable project. May I ask at what point in time does the council anticipate the research relating to this project will be sufficient to ensure the Dane Valley project is a viable project. Surely that point would not be reached until a likely investor has been secured, and that could take several months, if not longer. Thank you. Yeah, yes, thanks, thanks for that. Um, the significant changes are, are to be discussed at the, there's a new meeting being set for the uh, steering group, which I've, I've, met, I've got written down, I think it's the 21st of uh, the month. Um, from memory, um, twenty first of August. Yeah. So the, the the significant changes to be discussed at that point, which is public meeting, and um, the, the team is still working on those at the moment. There is only probably two. Uh, we have to work with the planners at Lewis, and it's them that have made these decisions, not the steering group. Same with the you're right. It is Regulation Sixteen. The Dane Valley project, um, the viability there is an issue that again the Lewis district have pulled up, not, not ourselves. Um, and the issue they've got is making sure that it's viable in a way that all the landowners buy into it, which they already have, they've committed money to it. Uh, but then the ACOM are doing research into the, the viability of the site, which is being paid for, and it's the, it's the outcome of the ACOM site. Uh, when that comes back, the report, sorry, when that comes back, that is the time when it will either be viable or not viable. Um, all the indications are it will be viable, but the District Council want to uh, make sure that it is before we commit to go to the next stage. And as the planning authority, we uh, stuck by that really. Um, for the ACOM report, we expect it to be done by the end of the calendar year, if not sooner. Um, but it is going to take quite a while. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Madam Mayor. This is very brief for me today. Um, it's regarding agenda item 7, Dangerous Report, uh, 1.32, you mentioned Cliff Gardens and the concrete blocks. And we had no idea that they were actually moved. Um, and you're hoping to reinstall that. Well, I just would like to say, as I do walk the seat every day, that they were really effective. 
and I believe we would have had the more travellers getting in if they hadn't been there that time, which would affect the uh, triathlon as well, which has a different effect on, on everybody. So I know you're thinking about putting them back, but I would like to really ask, could you really look into that? Because they do work very well. That's all. Thank you. Okay. We um, just give you an update. We have obviously replaced them with, uh, we, we had to react very quickly. Okay. We managed to get some aggregate in, in large uh, ton uh, bags, which has replaced them for now. Uh, we are looking at, uh, we did look at a couple of companies to make us some uh, of the same spec as what we had from the Port Authority. There wasn't anyone who was able to do that locally, so we, uh, Tony's been looking around and we've got five different places at the moment that can supply them, uh, but they're about £350 each and £500 each to transport. Um, so there's a lot of costs associated with them. We're just looking at the moment at how we can minimise that cost. So one thing we've talked about today to make this using the guy who we've used to get them delivered to go and pick them up for us and reduce the cost that way. Um, so we, we're looking at how we can achieve a, a cheaper cost to get some of our own, which we'll then be able to use uh, for any other problems. Uh, I agree that we're a deterrent, uh, as I witnessed, uh, not long after I saw the husband, uh, I, I witnessed later on that day some Irish travellers turn up and look at the road. Right. Uh, who were based in New Haven at that time uh, and shook their heads because they realised that could be in. Yeah. So it definitely does work yeah. um, and, and so, you know, I've got no doubt that they are a good system and we want to replace them but we've got to find them for a reasonable cost. Yeah. We've looked at hiring as well and hiring is ridiculous. No. £40 a week for each one. Uh, you know, so, it's just, so what we're thinking is once we get some bought and we have a permanent solution that will offer hours on hire and make some money from that. Since, uh, since my last report, uh, organising a civic service uh, with um, um, Trevor, who had only just returned from life threatening illness and is still making a big recovery. During the service, there was a representation from my two chosen charities. A retiring collection had an amazing £200. After service, we retired to the parish hall where tea, cake and clotted cream stones were served. Once again, thank you to St Andrews for hosting the event. The weather for Armed Forces Day was the reverse of last year's, a glorious sunny day. Some may say it was too hot. We had a bigger parade this year, led by a marching band, which proved very popular. A number of veterans said to me how significant the event was and thanked the organisers of Supertown Council and in partnership with the Royal Society of St George. Uh, sadly, I had to attend two funerals. The first, Rita Scarf, a uh, past Seaford Town Councillor, and Father Martin Yord, who was my chaplain for 2011-12. I've attended further 18 engagements since my last report, and the most recent one was our past young Mayor's Tom's grand opening of his wheelchair swing in the Salts last Saturday, which was, which was a very proud moment for him. He has certainly left a legacy. Um, and the other thing uh, uh, is please come and support the Mayor's Golf Day. Even if you don't play golf, come and have breakfast or a chance you love and a raffle. Uh, the event is on Friday the 21st of September. Thank you. Comments, uh, otherwise, we'll go on to the young mayor's report. Uh, <coughs> uh, hello, I hope you've had a good summer so far, and I quickly wanted to apologise for my hair since I'm a bit um, 
excited for uh, Brighton Pride this Saturday, and I had to get in the spirit. <laughs> um, with my events that I'm planning so far, I've got a couple in the works, which range from a massive town-wide rounders event, uh, to theatre trips, to murder mystery evening, and I hope that uh, you could have, like, attend a few of my events. The reason I'm doing these sort of events are because I'm raising money for Seaford Head's music and drama department, which is severely underfunded. And I also wanted to introduce uh, my uh, deputy, uh, James, who hopes, uh, who is going to hopefully work with me closely to raise the money that the drama and music department severely needs. And uh, that wraps up all that I need to talk about, so thank you. Can I just say, I totally am backing Don. The arts department at Seaford Head is really very, very short of money, and they need all that we can raise. So I hope you'll support them. <coughs> Any other questions? <coughs> we go on to the arts report. Thanks, Chair. Sure. Um, I won't go through everything, I'll just pick out a, a few um, points of note, really, if I can. can. Um, just in the beginning of the report, since since we did this report, we've had um, three more Freedom of Information Act requests, um, which I'll detail in the next one, all from the same person, um, all on different subjects as well. Uh, but um, yeah, we've had three more. Um, we we obviously we've mentioned the travel issue just in the questions. Um, we did get an awful lot of complaints about that at the time, um, as soon as they arrived on the twenty third. Um, the phone was read out, uh, emails coming in, because people have got our contact details from dealing with travellers in the past. We had quite a lot of uh, contact from residents. Some a little bit frustrated that we didn't move them straight away. Uh, to be fair to the ones that were camping there, they actually were behaving themselves and there wasn't any evidence of any activity, criminal activity associated with them, which made it more difficult to move them. When there's criminal activity, it's easy to move them, because the police will get involved then. And do section 61. Um, but when we, they did move, it was agreed on the Thursday uh, to be fair. I went and had a look at the site on the afternoon after they'd been there, and there wasn't a speck of litter anywhere. Uh, the site was actually uh, just as clean as when they arrived, so uh, different from every other traveller group we've had in the past, I've got to say. Um, and we equally got lots of thanks from the residents about getting rid of those as well, so um, and, and it did go off without incident, as I say. There was a couple of incidents that day, but I think they were actually related to another group who visited the town for the day. Um, and there was a few issues uh, on that afternoon, in that um, day. Um, the, the other issue we had was with a permanent park caravan on the seafront, which I know a lot of people mentioned. Um, there was difficulty with that because it was on the highway, it wasn't on town council land, so we were actually had no powers to deal with it. Um, but the neighbourhood first team actually came up trumps and they dealt with it uh, very well um, and it, it was removed and they actually took it away in the end um, but they hired someone to take it away in the same way that we did with one of the ones that was on Cliff Gardens um, so that was really good uh, but that was dealt with in the end fairly quickly once they were aware of it um, we mentioned uh, some really well organised events Sam Forces did already the film in the Fort Gap has been a, a big success for us and a couple of the staff have done really well with that, uh, Sharon Bryden in particular. Um, we, uh, oh, sorry that's not, that um, the view, uh, just again performance is, is excellent, um, as I mentioned in an email yesterday, um, it's continuing to exceed all of its uh, previous uh, performances and, and again, uh, although we haven't got the definitive figures yet, because it takes a few days from Melbourne to fill it through, um, it does appear that again it's made a profit this month, uh, which is uh, several months in a row now. So we we quite um, pleased with the way it's performing, and we expect similar this month because we've got a lot of big events booked in, including a wedding tomorrow. Um, and we have another one a late booking for a wedding in September as well, so that's been a welcome bonus. And we have a wedding in October as well. Um, so the the, the big events are coming in, and they're the ones where we do uh, do well financially. Um, so it's you know very positive again. Um, leases, I've just like to mention, we have had difficulties with leases um, because <coughs> the clubs they want to change the leases to include parts of the salts, the, the actual ground, and that's not really viable for the council because it takes away control from us. 
and equally they're both on the same bits of ground so you can't lose it for two different people at the same time uh, as well as just being in control of it so it's quite a difficult one to overcome but we are dealing with that at the moment. Um, I have mentioned about the, the land sale at Northway, again I sent an email to the councillors yesterday uh, that is progressing well, it's all been verified. We do expect some uh, objection from the nearby residents, um, but you know, we go back to the original consultation we did with the town, we voted in favour of the sale of uh, income to do things like the toilets. Um, but equally, um, there's no way that that area could be a playground or a play area. It doesn't meet any of the Rosper guidelines. Um, it has no natural surveillance. Um, there's lots of reasons why it's not big enough. Um, it's never been used as a play area. It ironically has a sign on it saying no ball games. It doesn't even have a seat for parents to sit on for kids to be playing there. So it's definitely never been a play area. And really, we couldn't, as a council, doing the risk assessment, it would be wrong of us to use it as a play area. Uh, so we will be, no doubt, uh, before the committee of Lewis to, to argue our case for that one in due course. Um, litigation, two matters as you were moving on, uh, haven't gone much further unfortunately. We try and have the best with one to make contact, but there's no response. With the other one in relation to Hairless House, we still haven't got close on, on any sort of formal settlement with that, uh, but we are continuing to, to have some dialogue. Um, as I just mentioned, the public participation, the, um, the Labour Plan is having a steering group meeting on the 21st of August at 7pm, and it will be here. Uh, the roof of the view, uh, just for everyone to know, that's complete and it looks uh, amazing. Uh, it's definitely better than what it was when it was first laid. You can see the difference. Um, it's a nice thick uh, roof full of greenery, which is where it should be. Uh, so I was really pleased to see that when I went up again tonight to have a look. Um, the brown sign scheme, which has been a scheme, I think, which has been outstanding for about six or seven years. Um, We've eventually got the signs going in, they're all in except for two. Uh, the last two will be going in over the next couple of weeks. The one that's taken most time is the one coming in from New Haven, uh, near Bishopstone, which is the main sign, pointing people to the seafront, etc. Um, that one takes longer because it's such a big one, they have to get one of the engineering teams in to lay the, the foundations for it. <coughs> uh, but they will all be going complete over the next two weeks, which is great. Um, there's a few things I want to mention which aren't in my report, just to try and keep councillors as up to speed as possible, bearing in mind I won't be seeing you in a council meeting until October. Um, I didn't hear any cheer there. <laughs> um, the, uh, one is a, one I was in with Councillor Elton today, which is Elms for Seaford project, which is a really positive project to commemorate the dead from Seaford from the First World War. So the Seaford tree wardens are looking to plant, I think, is it 103? 110. 110 trees, yeah, yeah. which is the number of people who were killed from Seaford in the First World War. Also, nine in Bishopstone, which is the number that was killed in Bishopstone as well. Yeah, so really positive projects. We're looking to help them with that, finding locations, and we're doing some work with them on that at the moment, which is great. And they're very keen to, to deliver on that. And we will be bringing a report to the October meeting. Uh, but we are looking at planting in November um, because that's the time to plant elms as some of our councillors know better than um, we, we also have um, another project that we're involving them in, uh, some of them, which is the grass verges issue, which a lot of us have had a lot of re about, it's kind of a council decision. Um, we're looking at doing a survey of all the sites using the expertise of the tree wardens and councillor Elton um, to look at each one with a view to how we can manage that in the future. So. The, the opinion is that there's probably somewhere we're better off cutting just once a year, but collecting and taking away, which creates a really good wildlife habitat. There's somewhere we may go back to six cuts, and there's somewhere we may look at residents looking after them, which a lot of them already do. Um, so we're going to, there's three different ways of dealing with the different areas. Um, uh, Councillor Elton and the volunteers are going to look at that and come back with information with a view to us presenting the report, which will enable the council to make a budget decision. Um, later in the day, uh, towards the, the end of the financial year, so you can decide if you want to commit anything as a council towards that project or just leave it to the county council, as is the case now. Um, the, yesterday, as well, I mentioned these, we did uh, send out positive financial uh, information for our councillors. The, um, 
the golf course has uh, achieved uh, takings of over six and a half thousand pound more for the comparable month last year, so it's performing really well this year. The view account, as I've already mentioned, is, is achieving incomes in the region of fifty thousand pounds every month, which is again excellent. And uh, we did sell a, another beach up this week as well, so um, financially a lot of good positive news uh, in the last week. Uh, I'm happy to answer any questions that Councillor Thanks, Councillor Thank you, Manita. I'm just interested in 1.13, how far we can individual. I wondered if you could say a little bit more about that. I mean, on two, two fronts, really. One is I'd be interested in what their concerns were, and also really the, the use of your time. Is it not something that either councillors or someone else could have, have dealt with? It? Yeah, a, a fair point. Um, the way I'm looking at it is that if I, if I do one maybe just every couple of weeks um, and deal with, these are people who tend to take up a lot of time anyway, um, on the whole. Um, I, obviously I can't name any names, but the the, um, the issues that were being raised were very diverse. They weren't, um, and some of them were quite uh, critical. Uh, and I know some of the councillors here, if, uh, if I was to mention the names, would, would have recognise the names because you've had emails from them. Um, but uh, the, I think a lot of it was just really to overcome their misunderstandings of what our powers are, for starters, what we do, and with one of them, what the councillors do as well, because it was very critical of councillors, um, and, and didn't really grasp that there's more to being a councillor than spotting if someone's having a car boot fair in the garden. Um, you know, I explained to a lot of councillors do a lot of really diverse things and as volunteers. So we, it was, it was quite productive. Me, uh, the other one, um, that was two two people involved in that meeting. The other one was with a gentleman who had put it about that the council should um, rent out the view in the golf course, and with the income it generates from that, pay the county council to keep Warwick House open. Um, now. That sounds plausible in itself, but actually when you sit down and go through the mechanics of the finances, the, the view has a loan which it pays, which is £103,000 a year. We know that if we rent it out, it wouldn't cover the loan. We just have to look at the golf courses in, in Brighton to know that. Um, and so you'd still be in deficit, so you wouldn't have the money to pay um, for, for Warwick House. So it wasn't. It was just going through that winning room of that process and he was very grateful for the time. It was only 15 minutes as it happens that one, you know, 20 minutes tops. Um, so it, I, I found them both actually quite useful meetings and just wouldn't have any more queries made of them, so let's see. Um, Thank you, Madam Mayor, and good evening. Um, just one more for you on the, the, the brown signage sign. I, I don't know how many signs you were all in. But do, you mean, do you mean on, on the A259 and not the 127? Or, or do you mean the 27 one? Sorry, very kind, 259. So it is a 259, that's the last one. So, yeah. I thought you, so when you're talking about from New Haven, you mean Denton Corner roundabout, or do you mean. Where, where, where that's Jimmy on the uh, no, 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 just at just at the Bishopstone Junction area. There is a there's a site there. There's there an additional one from yeah. a different direction. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's there. a big one going in just near. Right. There's one on the yeah, there is. on the thing yeah. close at the moment, isn't there? Yeah. And there's another one. This is a massive one, yeah. uh, more of a rectangular one. Yes. Um, so how many signs are, are we meant to look at for all in? Um, um, off the top of my head, <laughs> it's, it's in the region of about 11 or 12, I think. 11 or 12. Yeah, yeah, some of them are very small ones, you know, just directing yeah. you to, to, to the, the, the salts or whatever, uh, or to the uh, TIC. Uh, the, the other ones are obviously some big ones. What, what we are fairly sure of is we do need some more. Oh. Uh, we, we decided that we'd get these ones in while the offer was there to get them in, rather than trying to start again. Yeah, which is what was suggested. Um, but we, we're pretty sure that when this is finished, this phase, we probably as a council will look and see if we do with a few more. Um, there's one way it'd be very difficult to find a location, but we'll come back to the council with that when we've done research. Going on the brown sign you see, I've been asked by the president of the Bowling Club of Crouch so if we could have one showing the signs of the Bowling Club. Um, he keep pestering me. <laughs> all right. I mean, with something like that, they need to pay for it themselves. Um, he said, well, what he said, sorry to interrupt, what he said to me, he said, you've got one to the Crouch Gardens. Could there not be one put there 
change the Brony Club because some of the visiting teams have not clear where we are. Okay, I, I think if you, because again, as I say, we are going to review the sign. Do you use it? You dropped us a line. Mm -hmm. I have spoken um, to tell you about this. All right, yeah, and we'll, we'll look at that when we do the review, because we, we are aware that, as I say, it's not the finished product. We, we realise it will be... Oh, no. thank you very much. No problem. Anybody else? Sorry, I'm contents of the report. Thank you. Thank you. Quite a note on the agenda. Um, policy reviews. So 8A, um, safety, health and environmental policy on pages 23 to 48. <coughs> this, yeah, the, um, this, this is a, a policy that was previously um, drafted uh, by our previous health and safety officer. Uh, Jenny Hallerton, and it's subsequently been updated by uh, the current health and safety officer, Bob Offen, uh, Inspector. Sorry. Um, the, the changes that are, are being put in are really just uh, to reflect people's positions within it. I think it's a, it's a working document. Um, we do need to, uh, I've made a note that we need to sit down as a team and just go through this um, to make sure all the officers are clear on the responsibilities that are within it. Um, but really, I'm happy to answer any questions on it, but it does, it does uh, meet our needs in my dream. Just one or two comments. Firstly, on page 27, and by your responsibilities, there's a typo, misuse is misspelled. Um, page 32, the management of asbestos. So what page is that? Oh, sorry. Um, health and safety. Page 22, okay. item 2.4, it's not to misuse anything provided, it should be misuse. It's not two S's. It's a non anyway. Okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. 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 What I actually wanted to talk about was page 32 about the management of asbestos. My understanding is that there's quite a lot of asbestos in the South Hill barn. Yeah. Um, is that not? Because obviously that's a concession area and it's open to the public. And I just wondered, have we flagged that up for... Um, for um, the, the asbestos we have there is as, it's asbestos sheet, which is yeah. low risk. Uh, yeah. the, the surplus is gone. We got we removed that from the site. The only aspect is there's the roof, mm. uh, which is deemed, you know deemed, we have had that checked and it is safe. Um, but the the loose sorry the not the loose that's the wrong way to use the the pieces of asbestos that were in the barn in the in the side that have gone. They've been taken away. And lastly, page thirty eight. Um, there's a comment about notifying diseases. I'm, I'm a bit puzzled by this because there is a list of those five diseases, 32 of them. Mm -hmm. But I don't think it's very likely that any of them are going to be found in the town council offices. They start with things like anthrax and cholera okay. and end up with yellow fever. Mm -hmm. And these are notifiable by medical practitioners such as myself to the health, health and safety um, and communicable disease consultants. So, Things like tummy upsets, norovirus, etc., are not notifiable. So I just it just seemed rather strange because I think mm. it's pretty unlikely that that any one individual would be involved. And if individual people were taken ill and they were found to have something, then whoever made that diagnosis would report it to the communicable disease consultants. So I just just seemed a little at odd. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, whose responsibility yeah. this would be? It, I think as as with most things with health and safety officers and inspections, they do tend to cover things that sometimes are very remote yeah. chances of happening. I think this is a classic example. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I've okay. about your expertise yeah. on not the diseases. Yeah. I wouldn't have a look at yeah. this and possibly um, the you know, food poisoning might be the only one that okay. actually came up. All oh, right. Well, that yeah. could be. Obviously, yeah. we're having lots of food mm. outlets. Then I suppose there is a possibility of that because <coughs> it's not just ours; it's the mm. concessions yeah. as well. Yeah. So. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So yeah, so I suppose that one would fall in with it potentially. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So Just an aside on that. <laughs> <laughs> we did we did actually have a builder who was working on some farm buildings where we lived before who did get a form of anthrax <laughs> he was doing some building there, so it's not not impossible. Yeah. Uh, it's just a minor thing, um, Madam Chair. I, I can't see the general manager actually named in the uh, staff structure. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, thanks for that. Um, yeah, that's because the view structure's not there, so... Um, it's sort of partially um, amended, but not fully. Thanks, 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 thanks for that. We, we, can, yeah. we can make the necessary adjustment as with the point that you raised. Uh, we made a note, so we'll make those necessary adjustments. Thank you for that. <coughs> you are recommended to formally adopt uh, the review of safety, health and environment uh, policy and two, to agree to its review in August 2021 or sooner if necessary. So I think we can take two together. So can I put those out and second hand? Thank you. That's a good one. Second hand. Thank you. And can I have a show of hands for this? Um, then, the memorial and donation policy, pages 49 to 52. So, yeah, we've been, um, as councillors know, we've been, since we adopted the last, uh, or the original version of this policy, um, we've been highly successful with, um, not only generating income, but actually generating income to provide benches and seats uh, on the show uh, where we need us, rather than, as was in the past, where we were just people coming along saying, I want to put a bench there, and actually we're perhaps putting too many benches in some locations and, and not in other places. So mm -hmm. we are very um, strict now that we actually don't need any more on the seafront, and that's for a reason. Uh, because they do need to be maintained and it's the hardest place to maintain them and I've never seen them all full yet uh, so I think we've got plenty there um, the, uh, so therefore we're pushing people to buy benches elsewhere uh, or contribute to other projects and, and that has been very successful in particular the Shore project where we had over £70,000 of donations towards that um, which obviously was an amazing achievement uh, and you know, in particular Lino in the office did really well in managing that. Um, so this policy is really just taking us on from there. There's no significant changes um, apart from the, the issue of, of ashes which we've removed because they just prove too difficult every time we have to deal with them and the cost in terms of man hours tends to be um, a lot. Um, you know, the expectations of people are quite high so we've taken those out um, and, and also um, the, the, the issue around, I think that's the main issue actually we've taken out um, to, to deal with uh, just where we are currently. Uh, but I'm happy to answer any other questions when the, the policy is presented. Thank you. Um, yes, yeah, it was 1.4, it was about the um, movement of scattering ashes. I don't know whether that's fully worded, but I didn't quite understand what it was. What, what had happened, but you're saying that there's no scattering of ashes anywhere now. No. Or, no. And could you say a bit more about why? Because it is something that people request, isn't it? Yeah. You know, yeah. Favourite park or yeah. you know, golfers or, or whatever. <laughs> um, a lot of them want scattering in the nature reserve, which is difficult, and if not um, impossible. Um, the others want to do it in areas where there's a risk, so we have to send officers up to supervise. Um, they tend to not want to do it where is, is use uh, actually convenient and, and we do get other people not liking it and the ashes spread there as well, you know, where, where people are walking, um, you know, walking through someone's ashes is not a pleasant experience for some people. So the, the, just the whole thing is, and, and it's the difficulty of agreeing on a location with people, um, you know, they want, as I said, they want to put them in places that actually we can't agree to. Um, and, and just having that discussion is taking up an awful lot of time and sometimes results in nothing. 
uh, in terms of them coming to change their mind because it's kind of where they want. So we've decided the best option is just to say, sorry, we don't take it. As do most councils, actually, when we've looked. We're not unusual in changing the list. Just say, I'm sorry, but we don't accept ashes. There is an ashes garden in the cemetery. You know, if people want to spread their ashes, they can do it in the cemetery. And there is somewhere to do that. Mr. Clark, having been uh, the chair of the recent appeals committee meeting that dealt with um, uh, mementos and flowers at Memorial Bench, one of the criticisms by the complainant and indeed the comments back from the committee was that the town council had been a little uh, deficient in its communications with the complainants about the, the, the processes that have happened um, both during and subsequent to the incidents that they were, the complaint was about. Um, so therefore I'm quite desperately disappointed to see in section 5 um, the inclusion of the wording that uh, um, items would be removed immediately and disposed of um, without any notification. Um, so can I have your insurances please that um, the, the without notification um, wording um, is not um, it's to the exclusion of any communication whatsoever. Yeah, um, <laughs> it's a difficult one because one of the biggest criticisms from the uh, family concerned, and, and obviously the uh, <coughs> complaints panel upheld our decision to remove the, the items from the, um, the bench they donated. One of their biggest criticisms is that uh, other people were allowed to keep theirs because the longer you allow them to be there while you're trying to get in touch with them to remove them, that creates the perception that they're actually being allowed to keep them there. So the idea is by saying remove them immediately is that as soon as we're aware of them, we remove them so that there isn't that perception that one, you're allowed to do it, and two, if yours get removed, somebody else was allowed to have them because we're taking them away straight away. Um, and the other issue is, a smaller issue, is that um, some of the memorial benches, we haven't got any data whatsoever for who bought them or whatever. Admittedly, the more recent ones, of course, we have. Um, but the, the idea is that this is the policy people will get now, and therefore they know that if they put anything on there, it will be removed without notification. Um, I appreciate that perhaps those who have bought the policy, the, the, um, the bench in the past, would be aware of that. But equally, the policy has always said uh, very clearly that the bench is not their problem, it is the town council's problem. They are making a donation for the town council to buy a bench for the public. Um, all this is doing is saying that we will remove things straight away. I think any delay is actually counterproductive and just create the impression that we are allowing them to stay there. If I could just clarify, my comment was less about the immediate removal of items, but the complete lack of any communication with people, which was probably the committee's only criticism of the process. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to add to that, that we will, we will write where details are available and advise them that we remove them, not that we go to remove them. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I was at that meeting as well, and although they had begun with headbutting against what they conceived as the regulations that they disliked, when it came down to it, um, these were things that they created with love, that they had invested a lot of memorial energy into, as well as as much as the bench. Um, so their main issue was with a a misunderstanding and a sense that it had been somehow desecrated in the way that it had been removed so rapidly. Um, not that it couldn't be up there, but just that it was, can you come and get it? Oops, sorry, it's gone. Uh, so my issue is not so much with removed immediately as with disposed of. Um, it would be, can we, is there any way to word some compassion into this? Because when people are stunned and in shock and just trying to do something else for a relative, they don't read the full thing. We, we, we need to build in, I think, a second chance. Does think, that? Does I that? Think, yeah, I, I'm, if I maybe just going to suggest something. Um, thank you. Thank you for that. What we could have there is that, uh, that any items are removed immediately and start for 14 days. 
and thereafter dispose without any further notification. But officers will wait at the time of uh, removal to advise that the items have been removed and they're available for collection for 14 days. Yes, Okay. Well, thank you very much. Um, going back to the scattering of issues, um, they said that um, they were not going to be allowed to scatter anywhere. What happens with the person who is deceased then is left in their will, say for his golf with the golf courts, the wishes to the ashes to be put on the golf courts, so therefore you're undermining really what that wishes of their person were. Very difficult, but before you make such a wish, you should make sure that you can do it, you know. Mm. The same as saying, I, I, I want you ashes scattering in Buckingham mm. Palace Gardens. You're not going to be allowed to do it. Yeah, but surely, coming back, surely the person who's making that out is not aware of the, of the policy. As I say, they should check that before they put it in the will, that they're going to be allowed to do mm. that. The duty is on them to, it's, it's land that they don't own, they shouldn't presume that they can have their ashes spread there without checking first. Right. Yeah. Mm. Just to answer my question, actually, <laughs> I do find it difficult to please. Just again, um, going back to the, to the ashes, is it not, not worth specifically mentioning? The I know, I know it's the same with this as a council, but I think could that be a, as a place where you can actually scatter uh, ashes at the moment? It's not, you said you can, effectively, you said you can't scatter the ashes anyway, so you are going to be doing that policy. So if you could give a location of, of the loans of the cemeteries, I mean, we're not able to mention your homes as well, I don't know, but I think all the cemeteries in the area have, have scattering areas, don't they? I don't know, we don't have bishops, I think New Haven cemeteries, I, I, it's only going to take out for that, actually, isn't it? So, 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 anyway, some's looking a bit further, but if you could mention a location where you could, that'd be good. Thank you. Councillor, do you want to add anything to your hand up? It's man and man. I'm just interested, uh, as my colleague has said, that we should have somewhere in secret where ashes can be can be legally just, you know, yeah. released. Because yeah. a lot of people put that into their will. It, it's okay saying they should read the policy first, but when you die, you won't read policy. No. Also, I find it would be very difficult to please anyway. Yeah, well, yeah, uh, we're aware that people scatter their ashes, stuff we know nothing about. You know, we do see them, it's very clear that's happened. <coughs> You're right, we can't police it, um, but equally, we can't really manage it either um, because it just it's proved impossible and incredibly frustrating you know, because of the nature of what we're dealing with. Um, I think you know, the point about where you can't scatter, as we said, in the cemetery in town, um, I don't know if there's anywhere else. I, I didn't realise the churchyards. I presume all closed churchyards don't allow it. Um, I need permission. Yeah. Same with anywhere you need permission, um, and, and some will allow it, some won't, but the cemetery does. Of course, the UK might both discuss ashes and sea. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. If you stand at Splash Point when the wind's blowing east, you can do that. Right. <laughs> 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 it was minor, and you just said that, thank you, but the UK um, you know, lifeboat does it. But if we invested in some. Okay. So I think we've, we've done an amendment which I read out. So I think you, you, you're approving the uh, policy on the basis of that amendment, yeah. So can I have a proposal? Thank you, Councillor Brown, a seconder. Councillor Brown, a seconder. Councillor Brown, a seconder. So, yeah, the, the policy is um, as was, uh, there's no significant change to this. Um, I have made some notes that we, um, you know, we've had a lot of discussion about the gel disease and such like today, and we are looking at being proactive about that and doing a press release to let people know what it looks like. Again, Councillor Elton's going to help you with that, with his expertise. Um, the, uh, 
the idea being that we, we actually tell people and put them in the gardens as well what to look for because it's one thing the Dutch elm disease that's on civic trees being dealt with but if it's not dealt with in private gardens then the people will transfer to other trees um, it's, it's not particular about whose trees it goes on so we need to um, the one that carries the fungus um, we, we, so we need to get something out there so that people know more about that equally um, we are going to look at uh, a more detailed analysis of our trees that we have uh, is something that we're going to look at over the next uh, year or so. Uh, we may um, be put something in the budget to employ uh, an inspector to come and label all the trees as well, um, which I, I've done elsewhere, um, and I, I'm, I'm sure you've done that as well at uh, Wilden. Yeah, all being tagged. Yeah, and just the one, not every tree, obviously, just the high and medium risk areas. Um, so we look at doing that potentially, but there is quite a cost to that. I remember when I did one in Fleet, it was several thousand pounds. Um, so we will be looking at that and seeing how we can take that forward as part of this process as well. Any questions? So can we uh, propose a, uh, before we adopt the revised tree policy? Thank you. I'm not sure how to raise. Just give me a second. Um, Concessions and street trading scheme policy, pages 55 to 100. Mr. Chair, this is um, formalising a few things in one go. Um, we've we've always had uh, our fixed concessions, uh, which is the, the um, the cafe and the salts and the two concessions on the seafront, Frankie's and Martello. We've also always had the, um, the, the mobile ones, it, it, um, the ice cream bags on the seafront, as well as, in theory, uh, one at Hindover and one at um, uh, South Hill Barn. Um, they've been intermittent, uh, not consistent, obviously, and we haven't got one at Hindover at the moment. Uh, we've also, since we had the um, street trading powers delegated to us, which is something that is a strategic target of ours. We have been looking to provide additional traders on the seafront to uh, bring the seafront to life more, and, and that's met with a really positive uh, feedback from the public. Um, I, was, I was along at the, uh, the fish and chip one, along, um, which sells more than fish and chips because I had a coffee along with a lot of other people there. Um, and, and there was a lot of really positive feedback coming from people who came up to me and spoke to me about it. So. Um, there's definitely been feedback that's positive, but what we're doing is, is where we're trialling them is we're giving them a, 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 a fixed rent, which is a competitive rent, with a view to if we establish it as a permanent concession, we then go out to tender and it would be more of a competitive basis, and so we get a, a market price for the, for the pitch, um, and they understand that. So um, this policy formalises all of that. Um, I think the probably the most uh, important part, or certainly the, the, the clearest part of the policy to understand is one of the appendices, which I'll get to just now. Um, uh, sorry. Um, that. Um, appendix F, which is on page 100, um, which sets out the, the three different types of assets and what we follow to deal with those three different types of um, concessions. Um, we didn't have this formalised before for the fixed ones. Uh, as I say, we've been operating those for 15 years really and never really had a formal system in place. Uh, this reflects that system that we had. Although we've added that the once the tenders are opened, it's reported back to the Community Services Committee, which we didn't in the past, for them to approve. Um, same with the non-fixed tender concessions exactly the same thing happens there. Uh, the trial ones is, is dealt with by officers because that's much more of a dynamic uh, situation where actually you might get the chance of somebody coming and if you can't respond very quickly then they go elsewhere because if they look for a pitch they want to pitch quick. Um, and if it suits what we want then we will look at that positively. Um, but we are very aware when we're looking at anyone who expresses an interest and particularly on the same front that it's got to fit in with the ecosystem that's there. If they're taking away a lot of business from one of our permanent traders who pays a, a high um, rent, then we're not going to obviously allocate them a pitch. 
but if they complement, then we'll consider it. Um, but it is a very dynamic um, um, system that we have in place, and the team have done really well in, in getting where we are at the moment. We've learned a lot over the last couple of months. Um, it hasn't all been easy, but um, I think we've, on the whole, managed to improve the offering the system over the last few months, and the team have done a really good job. Um, so this policy just backs up what they've been doing, really. Okay. Um, a proposal to recognise that the council policy about possessions of street names very welcome. Officers must have clarity and authorisation to do this work because concessions, as you've said, that buy local employment are very much valued by local residents. An officer is to be commended about bringing this, this document to council. However, I do have one or two areas of concern. Item 8 generally is called policy reviews, and so far we've been talking about short amendments to pre-existing agreed policies. However, this, this policy, FC13, is a complex, previously undiscussed 45-page document, and therefore I suggest that it should have been a separate agenda item with full evidential and comparative documentation. It has not been discussed at the Community Services meeting. We don't have any particular dates or actual evidence about what we've actually taken on. We don't, we haven't been told what exactly the authority is that the town council has. And my main concern is what happens if there are challenged or contested decisions. We're told that the documents are based on the Lewis District Council policies, and I feel it would have been helped had there been links to the council policies, because I looked those up last night. And there do seem to be one or two differences in several important areas, such as the charges that are being raised, and the fact that there is no differentiation in the loose documents between food and non-food items. So there are differences in this policy. We have not, as councillors, discussed them. Some of the policies, areas of policy are described in great detail and are very objective, whereas others, such as the scoring system, require subjective judgment. And I feel that those judgments should be given to elected councillors rather than, rather than officers in order to support local transparency and accountability. It would also have the additional effect of reducing workload of officers who are already overworked. I think it would be wrong for we as councillors to approve this policy without proper information, discussion and comparison. And I therefore propose that this new policy should be deferred and referred to the Community Services Committee for more detailed consideration and hopefully with the full financial picture as when you go to the cost centre 1066 it does not make sense because as has been described all the concessions are put into one and it's difficult to get an idea of where the where the money is coming from um, at different times in the financial year and I think it would be very helpful to try and clarify all these issues all in one discussion at the community services who do actually have, have um, concessions as part of our unit. So I would like to suggest that propose that we defer this decision and refer it back to community services for further detailed discussion. Thank you. Um, just a few points. Um, the, the, the isn't a, uh, given uh, anything to officers. The officers do the scoring but they then report back the scoring in an anonymous basis, which is set out in, in Appendix F. Um, so the, the scoring's done, but it's very clear what we've scored, and the bids are there for councillors to see. The, the bids are open by two councillors as well. Um, so there's no, um, you know, it's wrong to say that officers are doing this, they're not. They're, they're just assessing them, uh, and then reporting back, and the, council, the committee makes the decision, uh, which could be uh, community services. Um, the policy uh, setting, um, it would be a, a retrograde spe step and probably a, a huge burden on staff if we start referring all policies through committees before coming to this meeting. Um, we just couldn't do that. I mean, policies are right at the tipping point at the moment of managing policies, as it is, I made reference to that in my report. To take them to two meetings doubles the work, doubles the time. And, and is just too burdensome on us. I think we would need to seriously think about additional staff resources if that's the way the council wants to manage policy development. Um, the the, um, the the couple of other things. I mean, the the, the prices uh, that we set. Yes, they are different from Lewis, uh, but we we set them taking into account. As I said, it, it is a an ecosystem on the seafront, 
and we are very um, mindful because of our experience in dealing on a regular basis with the permanent, temporary and uh, the new concessions of what the market value is for each pitch. Um, we're very aware of that. We're also very aware of if we make them too low or too high, uh, the impact that would have on our permanent traders and we don't want to lose them because, as we mentioned in the media, that brings in £62,000 a year. So these, these prices have been more relevant to what we are charging at the moment or what we're securing in market forces, which the District Council have never done. They've never put their tenders out to market forces, whereas we do. Uh, so theirs are, in my view, too low. Um, and I, I believe they will be changing because they're not like Eastbournes. Eastbournes are different. Um, the, um, the, the, pr the reason we went for a different one for food and for um, uh, non-food is because of the turnover. Uh, food items, if, you, if you're selling uh, food items, your profit margins are usually 70%. Uh, if not, you're not doing the business properly. Whereas, if you buy and um, if you're making uh, wooden products, or the lady who sells stones, she's making about 25% profit. Um, you can't uh, charge the same rate for the two. You wouldn't get any. We would just be left with the food if we charge the food rate. And if we charge the the non-food rate for the food ones, then we lose our permanent concessions because it's too cheap for food. So. That we did do a lot of um, you know, scientific analysis of where we want to be and the charges before we came up with these, these well thought out uh, recommendations that the team have put together. I, I, I think, you know, as I say, it would be a recommendation step for us to go back to the committee to consider policies. Um, we just haven't got the resources to be able to do that. Can I just ask more questions? You mentioned the lady with the stones. Is she down on the list of concessions at the moment? Yes. So I couldn't find her. Um, she should be. Yeah, she's. As far as I know, she's not there. She's not. Right, yeah, hers is a remnant of the street market decision the council made. Uh, so when the street market closed, the council offered uh, three stallholders who set up new businesses for the street market in, in the town the opportunity to operate on the seafront, but she will be drawn into this when the, when the policy is adopted in, in next year. Uh, this year she's got what she's got, but going forward next year she will be drawn into this system. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I just wanted to check about the burden on the officer's time for this because uh, we have a, a nine-page application for and quite a sizable pack of supporting documentation requiring every document for every application. Uh, there's also um, numerous checks, it seems, that may be required in, in, in validating the documentation, as well as background checks, credit checks, criminal record checks, and different sorts of stuff that is here. Um, that is a considerable amount of um, work per application. Are our staff going to be required to have training for this? Um, and therefore, what are the financial implications? Well, staff, are, because staff are already dealing with issues like this, so yes, part of ongoing training at all times within the office. Okay. So, so we, we, we would be prepared to do background checks, MOT checks, insurance checks, certificate checks, uh, hygiene um, certificate checks, and things else. Just for them to produce the evidence to us yeah. is just yeah, part of we, we need to check that the documentation is completely yeah. correct. Um, well, it depends on what the documentation is. I think we'd be checking to make sure it's not obviously forged. We, uh, we'd be able to do that. Um, we haven't looked, I've got to admit that I haven't looked at that detail. Uh, you know, this has come from my offices. Um, it's what they're doing now um, and to make sure that the applications that come forward are valid and bona fide people are doing it. Um, but this is the way they're operating already, is my understanding. Thank you. A um, couple of questions. Um, I, I, I have trawled. <laughs> I might have missed it, but I can't. I haven't seen anything about um, a restriction on the use of single-use plastics in there. Seeing as that, that as, you know, we have discussed this, and that needs to be in there if it's not. And I haven't. I haven't spotted it yet. But um, um, the other, perhaps more serious question. You said it hasn't been easy to quote you back at you. Um, 
the, the COVID that we've got at the moment, I mean, have they had sight of this? What, uh, why hasn't it been easy? Have there been issues brought up by the trust? Um, you know, where, where do we stand with what's going on at the moment and, and the difficulties? Um, it's not so much dealing with this. That's We've, we've had some uh, difficulties with individual traders uh, on the seafront, uh, which I think when you have any um, businesses on your premises, you can have difficulties, misunderstandings. Um, obviously, I'm being very careful. I don't mention any names here. So um, that was just day-to-day -day management things, where some of our traders are as good as gold, never have to deal with them, never have any issues. We've had some others that hasn't been the case. Um, and we have we've had to deal with those and have taken time off. Um, but they have been told that you know that type of behaviour won't be tolerated going forward. Um, for example, their payments and things like that. So we've changed our systems so that they actually get in advance at all times. So that they're, they're the sort of lessons we've learned. Um, small changes, not major changes, but small ones. Um, and there has been issues with the tidiness of the couple. Uh, but we've you may have noticed we've been and marked out the pictures now on the seafront where they're allowed to, to operate uh, to stop them blocking the promenade for example uh, you know which is an issue that we had with with a couple um, so we, we just it's just getting those uh, literally <coughs> those lines drawn um, so that we understand where the boundaries are when the new people existing ones who tend to not have any issues with which it's been you know there's one where we perhaps do uh, um, thank you again. Um, there's quite this quite a lot of ways. There's, there's no, you know, there's actually no dis, there's no implementation base at all on that report. Can't see it anywhere. No thanks. If it was approved tonight, it doesn't, doesn't say when it's when, when it comes in. We're talking about 1819. Well, we're already in 1819. So, so you do, are you backdating it on the first of April? Is that what you intend to do? The charges or, or how's it how's it going to work? Well, as with any policy, it's operational from the day that it's adopted. So it'll be operational from if it was adopted today, it'll be operational today. So the charges of the other con existing concessions have to pay more if they have, if that works out. Unless we've got an arrangement with them already, which is given yeah. them a, a, a leeway, yes, which we've ended into, which is obviously contractually binding. Because ideally, this, this should, have been, should have been sorted out in sort of February, March, shouldn't it really? Um, if you're going to charge them more compared to what they're getting at the moment. I think we, I think we probably would have. The experience we've learned yeah. is probably change this if we've done it in February, March, to be fair to the team we've done it. I think the, the, the um, we've learned a lot over the last few months as a team because they've never dealt with concessions before. Mm -hmm. um, so they've, they've come to terms of what, how we operate, what we do, mm -hmm. and they've got much more clarity now and understanding how to deal with things. So I think, to be fair to them, doing it in February probably wouldn't have been uh, appropriate. It, it is better that they do it when they build up the knowledge base, uh, which they didn't have then. Because what one of the questions could be to do with one of the traders, um, I mean, I can't name the trader. Best not to. Okay, but, but um, <laughs> if, they, if they've got a wedge structure on their, on their property, is that, does that come from them? They decide to put that up, or is that provided by yourselves? We haven't provided any of the structures for right. the temporary ones. They've all been provided yeah. by themselves individually. Yeah. Well, that's the spawn. Yeah. All right, thank you. Councillor Brown. Uh, yes, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, how would this affect organisations that set up a store to sell programmes for an event, for instance, the Secret Community Events Committee for the Motor Fest? They set up stores at, 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 at uh, Morrison and the uh, Church of Um It's so one day thing. Yeah, yeah. It, uh, things like that wouldn't be. Two or three sacks. Yeah. Um, wouldn't be followed in this. Um, you know, the, the, for one thing, you're probably outside of the area. If you're within Morrison, then you're definitely outside the area. Um, but yeah, the, the area is depicted on the plan, so um, it depends where you are, but the, the intention is not to cover uh, that type of activity. It is about commercial activity. The two stores are outside Morrison, and outside Tangley's um, alleyway, and that alleyway there, which is on Tangley's property. Yeah, well, that wouldn't apply then, it wouldn't be covered anyway. I think you have to get a license through the District Council uh, to, you know, for any charitable uh, thing. So they, they're the ones who grant sure it. There are a lot of charities, don't they? I think you're probably right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it isn't a street trade. Yeah. It isn't a street trade activity, what you're doing, though. 
Uh, it's just been the license that you're, you know, selling the charity um, program, and then you're not clashing with anybody else. Thank you, Charity. I'm still not clear. So, if so we, we do pass this this evening, would all of the um, concessions that are there now um, then have to go through this application process straight away? Or where are we at with perhaps the new ones, for example? Any new ones would. They the, haven't done that yet. Um, the, well, the existing ones have gone through a process already. A process, yeah, but not yeah. this. Well, probably reflective of this, very close to this. It. Yeah, This has been fine-tuned, I would say. Uh, but they've already gone through something of this nature. And it's, it's not, not, well, obviously it's not too late because we haven't approved it, but we can put things in like single-use plastics because it's... I, I, I've made <coughs> notes, I was going to suggest that we do add that to the licence conditions that they avoid the use of uh, single-use plastics at all times, where possible. Okay. Any other questions? Um, I'll hope I can um, got a proposal on the table uh, from Councillor Wehrman to defer um, this policy to EMT services, does that find a seconder? So can we have a show of hands of deferring this policy, please? And those against? Uh, there isn't any real changes to the policy. Uh, the only addition is the use of bylaws, um, which is uh, a bylaw we have available for public grounds and public walks, so about the spelling mistake there, uh, and open spaces. Um, the uh, bylaw does uh, prevent camping. Um, however, ironically, um, when the bylaw was devised um, in, uh, some time ago, uh, it was 10 years, 20 years ago, uh, for some reason, they missed off the smaller of the three Martello fields, which is exactly where the campers were recently. So we went able to use this bylaw. I have looked into uh, amending the bylaw to cover that area, and actually the process is exactly the same as rewriting the whole bylaw. Um, so it's quite a, a long process. So we're not planning on doing that just now, uh, but it is a note we've made that uh, we may look to amend the bylaw in the future. Um, we'd like to bring that back to the council in due course. Okay. Any questions? So, uh, can I have a proposal to adopt the revised travellers policy as presented? Thank you. And uh, second by Council Hayter. And can I have a show of hands, please? Thank you. Policy, to to yeah, this, this, um, obviously since this policy was last adopted, um, the, the twinning association is now uh, no longer in existence. Um, so that this policy reflects that fact um, and recognises that if another association was to set up, then the council would look to recognise them and work with them. Uh, other than that, we have no activity on the, uh, the twinning front as a council. Any comments? So can I have a proposal that we adopt 
revised 20 um, policy as presented. Seconded. Could I just make a point out, Madam Mayor, and on the policy, seeking this claim on his debt now is closing through credits. That's no longer current because we, we um, dissolved that claim in an official. But happy to uh, take that bit out of the policy chair. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Right, so I propose okay. I propose it did that amendment. Okay. Are you fine by that, Councillor Goodwin? Yeah. That amendment? Yeah. Um, can I have a second it, please? Councillor Hunnam, and can I have a show of hands? Thank you. Okay. Yeah, straightforward report. Hopefully, um, as with most years, we do close over the Christmas period. As it mentions in the report, if officers want to work during Christmas and New Year period, uh, they can do so, but the officers will remain shut. Uh, obviously, the, uh, the, the policy doesn't, um, the, the recommendation doesn't cover activities at the view and uh, at the uh, golf course. We do continue to, to work for the Christmas um, holiday period. Questions? Yes. Um, there is one query actually. It, it, goes, it says it goes to the 1st of January, and that is a public holiday, isn't it? Yes. It's the building's closed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You might have one. Arrangements will be looked at. There should be, in my opinion, arrangements made anyway for, to cover an emergency, not if there is an emergency. Yeah, we, we do we do have uh, systems in place which go through the view. Uh, so what happens is if uh, someone rings here, the answer machine refers them to the view. The manager of the view then has the uh, knowledge to deal with um, the emergency by either calling one of the officers, the relevant officer, or uh, dealing with it himself directly. It's usually touch what has never happened. I think uh, what it should be, in the event of an emergency, arrangements have been made. Well, they haven't, right. technically they haven't been made because we haven't had that meeting yet. <coughs> uh, so it wouldn't be quite true, but that's the way we do it. We, we have a meeting prior to Christmas. It looks like you're only going to do something if something happens. Right. Yeah. No, we have a meeting before Christmas and we make sure everything's in place and everyone understands. I'm just trying to reassure the public that's all right. Okay. Um, again, there is a um, answer machine message and there's an emergency number available. Um, but, you know, we very rarely get those. Uh, just, it's not an issue. I think most of the issues that we have, if we have any, are actually at the view of the golf course. So that's, that's where it is. Yeah. Okay, so can I have a proposal to approve the closure of the council offices from 4.30 p.m. on Friday, 21st of December 2018 to Tuesday, 1st of January 2018 inclusive? Thank you, Councillor Wise. 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 Thank you, House Blue Clock, the place, pages 119, 119. Chair, some members will be aware that uh, the History Society, in particular um, uh, Kevin Gordon, the uh, honorary town historian, are leading on a project to uh, erect a number of blue plaques around town. They're initially looking at 12. Uh, one of them is on town council property, which is the Herders House, uh, to recognise um, 
Dr. Pringle uh, Marvin, who was a pioneer in dyslexia. Um, so the, the, the idea is to have a plaque there that's uh, agreeing to that being there and approving the costs for the plaque and installation. Sure. Okay. Any questions? Thanks a lot. Just proposed that we approve this. Okay, I think it's a good thing for the town that, you know, there's the towns that sort of uh, recognise in our history. So, I think we can take one and two together and we can have our hands, please. That's your words. Mr. Chair, the, um, is, is detailed in, uh, in the report, in the appendix from the uh, planning officer, uh, Jeff Johnson, um, the opportunity to register existing Twitmans on a historical basis is right to where we'll, uh, we'll go in uh, 2026, I think it is, from memory. Um, the, um, therefore, it suggests that we set a working group up um, to uh, look at all the existing Twittons, compare those with the definitive rights of way map, which I recently secured a copy of uh, for, for people to use, um, and then make recommendations to the County Council on which Twittons that aren't existing rights of way should be made rights of way. Um, so what we're looking at is a uh, couple of councillors to create the working group, whoever wants to be involved, and then for them to uh, meet uh, arrange a meeting and look at who we should talk to, who's going to add value to the group, um, and then probably arrange some uh, footwear, I would imagine, to go and check uh, the various sites uh, and, and compare them with the definitive map. Um, I, think, I think it might be a good idea to have um, the councillor from each ward, because obviously you know your own ward to a certain <coughs> To, you know, obviously there are others. Councillor? Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to sort of add to that really that this is a conversation we've had at the, uh, the history group at the um, museum. And, you know, they're obviously very keen on this. And um, I know um, that people from, from that history group would want to be co opted if, if we're going to read on it. But they are also, just to make it a bit more fun if you like. Talking about actually naming all of these things mm. appropriately, if they haven't, if they've got um, common names that people use now, then obviously that'd be great. But if they haven't, then it's something appropriate as well. So I'd certainly like to volunteer to be. Anybody else? Yeah. Thank you can put one name down, but it can be done independently. You don't when you want this because you wouldn't necessarily have to do stuff in the group. You might, you might be able to do something on an evening or a weekend or something. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. you can, can any councillor can probably, if they know of any um, twittings yeah. or brights away, which you know yeah. is not adopted, to, to let the, you know, to let us know. We can um, we can send out the. Uh, Right to where we've got recently from these uh, electronically put it on the drive so you can all access that. So you can look at that and see if twins that you know are on there, it's a way to work. The problem is that there's some of them that are overgrown and you can't recognise them anymore because the council now not has to put the statistics down and cut them back. Well it, an issue, that's an issue around maintenance, but once they're once they're registered as a right of way. There's then powers under the Highways Act 1980 to enforce clearance by the landowner, uh, which there wouldn't be at the moment if they're not yeah. registered yeah. as a right of way. They just ignore requests of yeah. So it makes a big difference <coughs> on the definitive map. Is there one? Oh, I was just generally wanting to have a look at the map. Yeah, so, that's the Councillors Laura Walraven, Richard Honeyman, White, and Nick Freeman. I've got two from North. Two from North and North. Anybody on East? It's just a big room. I know there's a few in East Ward as well, because I've walked on a couple. I mean, any, you know, I would just like to 
as I say before, any councillor who knows of footpaths, um, just let I'm sure, I'm sure with the volunteers you have from the uh, side of the place, yeah. well, you'll be able to cover, cover them all. Could I suggest one of you volunteer to arrange the first meeting because it will be her and Katz. Um, you can do that. Thanks. working group to look at the footpaths in Twitters in Seaport and considering occasions of the proposed changes to the Rights of Way and Countryside Act 2000, reporting its findings, findings back to the future meetings of the Planning and Highways Committee, and two to approve dedicated powers for the working group. So can I have a proposal? I'm going to take them both together. Thank you, Councillor. I'm going to show your hands, please. Thank you. Item 12, the internal report, year ending 31st March 2018, pages 117 to 133. Chair Thompson, you apart from the, from the finance manager, um, as you can see from the, the appendices, we, we do get, uh, as you would expect from an auditor, we always find some points to raise, which we usually missed the year before. Um, and we, we have addressed, uh, as you can see, we've got actions taken against all the points uh, raised. Um, and we continue to work uh, through those actions. I'm happy to answer any questions. Any questions? That's all mm -hmm. um, I noticed on page 126 when the auditor was talking about the sample of transactions, he talked about beach up sales, say three sales amount of close to seven thousand pounds, which seemed quite low to me. And I'm just questioning that figure. And my other comment is, is about the bank accounts. But there was a comment that we have some, too many eggs in one basket in terms of the financial conduct authority. Would it not be sensible to have another bank account so we spread the risk and therefore we, we get twice as twice as much of the financial um, limit, which I think is eighty odd thousand pounds, rather than have everything with a card account? Because if, if someone bank is going to charge, then we might as well have two different banks and spread the risk, and therefore we should open an account with another bank. Uh, yeah, um, the, the, the beach one's easy to answer. We, we sold uh, one of the beach ones along at um, uh, the old beach ones, which was less. They were, if you remember, I think one was 26,000 or so there. So that's why the three came to uh, quite a lot less. There was two there sold. So I would imagine that that figure there includes two that were sold at um, Splash Point rather than the ones that were sold. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, uh, yeah, the the eggs in one basket, I, I understand what you're saying. Um, however, and I did notice this in the report that I meant to talk to Karen about this when she was in earlier in the week. Because Karen's doing a lot of research in our bank accounts at the moment. Um, I remember a similar issue being brought up when I was at Fleet, and we looked into the, the, the insurance, the indemnity cover, and we were advised by the banks at that time that it didn't cover, uh, it, only, it only covered personal individuals and didn't cover councils. So I was a bit surprised to see that recommendation from the auditor. Um, we will look at that though, uh, but certainly a few years ago, four or five years ago, we looked at this and we were definitely told at that time. It didn't cover anyone other than personal individuals, the indemnity cover. But we will look at it. Yeah, it's definitely that's something that Karen's dealing with now, but I didn't raise it as an issue when I saw on Monday. I will follow it up with my say next. Any other questions? So I have a proposal for recommendations to so be paternal to this report, to know the actions taken by council officers. To refer to the point point of Mulberry and Co. as internal auditors for 2018 19. Any 
Yeah, this is, um, as I say, I've, I've been talked to uh, Karen about um, our uh, bank accounts because of charges that we now um, going to incur uh, due to the, the size of the council's finances. Uh, we, we well over the limit. Um, and the, one of the biggest issues for us is actually cash transactions. Um, I, I did my bit uh, this evening and used a debit card to pay three pounds rather than cash. Because nowadays that actually saves us many ways before. That would be more costly, which is a really strange um, concept. Um, but we, uh, so we're looking at this, and it does appear from all the initial investigations that Karen's carried out that actually the cooperative is still going to remain the cheapest one, but it is going to be a cost uh, to, to stay with them um, compared to what we've been paying in the past, and it is in the region of about £3,000 extra in, in charges. Uh, the only thing we can do is we're going to sit down and just do a little bit of analysis. I was talking to uh, to Lucy, the finance manager, about this, and just do a little bit of analysis of where the costs are and see if there's a way to ameliorate those costs by, for example, encouraging people to pay by debit card rather than cash. Um, it, it, it the uh, pro shop, for example, for golf um, and, and things like that. If that saves us money, then that's what we'll look to do. So we're going to analyse it all and just see if there's some measures we can take to encourage behaviour to change to reduce our costs. Um, but the costs are going to go up no matter what we do, I can assure you now. How about paying for for small uh, uh, cash to... Um, well, we do electronic transfers for them. That, that isn't the, the... The highest cost in Ireland is actually the, us getting cash in and then taking the bank. That's what's costing us the most money of all of the different charges. Uh, it's not the only cost, um, but we, 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 what we haven't done is sat down and looked at the, ta the table of it in detail to say, well, if we change that type of behaviour to this type of behaviour, we'll save X amount. So that's what we're going to look at and see what we can uh, potentially change. It, it'll take a little bit of work on a spreadsheet for someone, but um, you know, hopefully we can find a way to, to reduce the impact. But at the moment, the, the, the best bet is still where we are, the corporate appears. Well, Karen's still doing a bit of work on this. She is off for a few weeks now on a holiday. Um, but there's no real heavy to change bank accounts because, as I say, we, we're with the one that's the most competitive at the moment. Any questions? Just, uh, just to the interest rate rise today effective? Um, well, yeah, we, we, we adopted an investment strategy not so long ago at one of the meetings, and, and potentially, yes, there'll be a smaller return on our investment. Uh, because you know, there will be uh, the money we put into our investment side, uh, but I don't think it will go anywhere near covering these additional charges, and I think it will be a few hundred pounds rather than thousands the, uh, the money we'll get back. Okay. Uh, can I have a final uh, thank you Switch to more suitable accounts if necessary. Or reporting back to the Finance and General Purpose Committee on any action taken. I have a, a question on that one, Madam Mayor. Um, reporting back to General Purposes on any action taken, should that be for, I mean, we've, we've given approval at that stage? No, we. the, the idea was if we can save money, we'd do it immediately. Yes, I agree with that. Yeah. And, you know, in finance, uh, finance, um, yeah. save every penny that we can get hold of. Yeah. But at the so, same so time, we need some. So we, it, it will be reporting back for information, but then there is accountability there because the council and the committee through the committee will be aware of what we've done and where we've moved the money. And obviously when you do things like the bank reconciliation, you will clearly be able to see that we've moved bank accounts as well. Um, it was to give us the opportunity to move quickly if we found something that is more competitive, but as I said, we, we haven't actually found anything more competitive at the moment. HSBC, Lloyds, or did you try? From off the top of my head, uh, the HSBC um, bank 
was somewhere in the region of three or three to five pounds per hundred pounds charge. Mm. So three to five percent charge on cash, which is incredible amount. Seventy-five pounds charge. Yeah, it's a lot of money. Um, so that that didn't work well for us that one. But Karen has got full spreadsheet of them all at the moment, so that's just managed to find. It, 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 it's not easy as well because we're not. We, there's not many banks who are set up to deal with councils. There is some issues around how we operate as well, which complicates things. So, you know, having the number of signatures on the checks and things like that, some of them find that difficult to deal with. Um, others don't understand the rules of, whereas Co-op do, but they've, they've got a specific account for parish and town councils. So there is some advantages to them as well in terms of due diligence. Uh, but if the weather's competitive, we'll be on house wherever at the moment, we haven't found anything. Can we be sure that we just had the one bank account? Because when you're reconciling the accounts, if you've got more than one account, it's a nightmare. Well, that, that's why I hesitated when there was a bank made earlier, because I know that would be a nightmare. And I know it would be difficult for the team and all for the, for the audit as well. Um, but it is about this issue of the, the indemnity. My understanding is, the last time I looked into this, the indemnity doesn't apply. So there wouldn't be a need to have more than one bank account. Unless we can find a way to um, to save on bank charges by having more than one account, then I don't think I would be looking to have more than one because that was some, an option I did put to Karen that we look at the possibility of can we save money by having more than one bank account. And traditionally, a company would have a savings account and a, and a sort of working account. I suppose you've gone on that basis and your working account yeah. is quite easy yeah. to, to um, afford it. Yeah, we have got that at the moment, but both yeah. with the court. Can I have a proposal? Proposal for the two recommendations. Thank you, Councillor Brown. Thank you, Councillor Brown. Open up, show of hands, please. Uh, donations box at South Hill Farm. Thank you, Councillor Brown. Um, th this came about as a result of discussions with the um, Cook Me Haven SOS, as you know, that this is a charity that's now been set up to save the um, iconic view there and stop the, um, the, the uh, Coast Guard cottages falling into the sea. Um, as a result of that, we suggested that we, we, we make the donations box a joint one. Um, my view is that actually, I think the money that goes in there will be more than doubled. Um, I think people are more likely to give money to that than they are to a council, in all honesty. Um, we are collecting in the region of £40, about £20 a week from it at the moment. Obviously it's more in the summer than it is in the winter. Uh, but I, I, my view is that we'll actually, we will not be anywhere else off by doing this. I think it, it will be a really good gesture for us to show support for the, uh, the project as well. That's the Ask that before we cast this into resolution stone, that we might consider this to be also a type of grant. If we give the undertaking this to one organisation, that we might want to consider that other organisations uh, may be just as deserving on an annual basis, so that we might wish to consider changing our nominated charity uh, at the beginning of the financial year. Rather than setting this now that all donations is 50% always go to the same charity in perpetuity. Um, hopefully, the charity won't be needed from perpetuity. Um, their, their timeline is a couple of years. They need One to get way or another, yeah. it won't be needed. Yeah, um, maybe it's until the appeal's completed. Um, I think uh, we do get a lot in return from the members of this charity up there as well. They're, uh, they are our eyes and ears on site, and particularly one of the, the residents who. I think it's. I, I, I don't know. I think it would be creating a lot of paperwork for what would be actually a smaller donation com compared to some of the bigger ones. Um, I was I was hoping we could just um, split split the money at the end of the financial year. Uh, after the sign goes on, obviously what we've collected to date. Okay. Okay. I only mention it because um, takings being in excess of £500 is, is you know, more than the, one of our small grants processes. 
Anything we do to yeah, I think you, what you could do is we could maybe um, say that this to, I, I would suggest because we, we have to change the sign and things like that, there's a cost to that, so to change it every year I would say it would be a little bit... I think it was to have the option to yeah. change it. I think maybe if, if you put a limit on it, I would suggest three years and then if you, then yeah. at the end of those, hopefully by then the campaign will be finished because that's where they're aiming, roughly. And then as a council, you, and then you could make a donation box, whatever you wish at that point. Um, if we bring it back at that time, you know, we can make an overall policy for them to bring it back in August 2021. If you're happy with that. Councilor Brown? I'm not happy with it at all. <laughs> um, it says that they are asked for financial support can be given to the campaign outside of the grants process. Now, we can, as a council, we committed ourselves to pass it through safer and we haven't given them a, a penny piece of support. Um, I was, uh, obviously, Councillor Freeman and I are on the steering group, so we've been giving them a lot of practical help. Um, this morning I took Claire Summers, who's been heading, on, heading this up, to the Chamber of Commerce, and she was so well received up there. Um, they're going to give her a lot of practical support, but one of the first things they said was, well, where are our badges to put on our shops? You know, what are we, where are the leaflets? Where, you know, where's the promotional material? And um, I just feel that they are, that is as equally as important as the Coast Guard's cottages. And I don't think it's right that we should just be handing over money to the Coast Guard cottages charity when um, there's a real struggle at the moment to kick, not to kick start, because the kick start has happened and it's rolling quite well but it's now desperately in need of a little bit of funding to, to get some publicity material to take it forward further. So I really am opposed to just can't blanche give this to um, Coast Guard Cottages. You know, if, we're, if, if the council has committed itself to plastic free seafood, I think we need to be doing a bit more than just lip service. Okay. I don't know proposal. Well, I, I mean, I, I, don't, I, I, I might have suggestions. Perhaps we could split it between the two, um, or I mean, my, my, <laughs> my own um, preference would be that it, the, the, the donations went to Plastic Free for a year um, to really get that underway. But I'm happy if people think it's better to be split it between Plastic SOS and Plastic Free. I mean, it's a major campaign. It's it, you know, it's not a little thing that we're doing here. It's a big commitment. Um, I'd like to concur with my colleague saying here. I think we're setting a precedent here. Um, we'll get requests now for every other charity and see, well, can we put a box up there? Can we put a box up there? You know, and the thing will spiral completely out of control. I think it should stay as it is, and we should uh, look at some way of making a donation to Plastic Free Seafood to support their efforts. Okay. Councillor White. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I completely agree that if we're pushing plastic splitting forward and the shops need badges, perhaps we should look at funding the badges and the plastic. Uh, sorry, vinyl, plastic free. Um, however, if those cottages fall into the sea, there's how many fewer people are going to be up there using our concession, um, putting money in the box, whatever. So, um, although it's out of the ordinary, and I don't like the fact that this first sentence says it like it's forever, I think perhaps sharing the box for a set period of time with people understanding that that's what they're putting in the box for, um, it does set a precedent that somebody else might ask us to do that, but I don't see the problem in that as a separate issue to also funding what's immediately needed to promote the event of the season. I mean, once we start talking about plastic, plastic free season, which is again a very good cause, we didn't see then that application come in with the, with the grants. That's no, the the yeah, well, that's, that's, the, that's the reason, Mark. But, um, but obviously, everything works in cycles, doesn't it? Um, I mean, there, there was, there was, without going through all the, all the list of the grants, some of those are pretty worthy as well, which we could have lucked a good more as well, but we, some of them only had £150, £200. 
So in, in that respect, some of the, some of the ones we, we, we missed out here, you could argue they could have had a little bit more money as well. So, um, I mean, I know cloud plastic free is, is the impact one. Um, we will be for, for a long, long time. I mean, if we talk, talk internationally, it's a, such and such a big issue. Um, but, but relative to this, I mean, I haven't seen, there's no finances for the Haven SOS. I haven't seen anything on the back of this, this report or anything. I don't know if that was intentional or it was just got, got missed out. But I don't know what their, what their finances are like for us to say, give them 250 quid, pounds even, sorry, quid something. Yeah. So there we are. I mean, I mean, I, I don't, I, you're obviously approach or you approach them, um, but we are, I don't know what their finances are like. Uh, the, the amount they've got to raise is about two hundred thousand uh, pounds. They've already raised forty, um, but the, the, they're a long way short, obviously. Um, and I think the the issue around this is that we're not expecting this to cost the council any money because people will put more money, I'm sure, um, and we can monitor that and, and see what the changes are. As a result of changing the, the signage, um, I think it's unfortunate to get confused with other. I understand people's um, commitments to different organisations and groups, but it, it's, um, this is on the site of the, the Seven Sisters and the, and the Coast Guard cottages. It's not in, you know, that's why it's relevant to to them, and a lot of people who walk past this box are walking past to go to the. Coast Guard cottages, that's what they're there for. Um, and that's where the, the relevance comes in for this, really, for being a joint one, because they're physically walking past that to get to the Coast Guard cottages. Um, I understand the, uh, the you know, plastic free uh, issues, but it, it is a different issue. And I think um, you've got to remember that when they came to us and asked us to support them, um, there was never any suggestion of financial support it was so that they could have the town council badge behind them to give them wage and that was what was asked for and that was what was given. I appreciate that we're too late to apply for a grant. Um, but if the council had indicated that we should consider it, um, in the past the council has said definitely do not allow anyone to bring a grant forward out of time, uh, which we've had in the past. Um, so that would be going against an existing policy of the council to bring in a grant application out of time. Uh, this isn't a grant, this is changing to donate the donations box to sharing it, um, which I, as I said, we believe it would cost the council anything. In fact, I think the council may benefit financially from, from this arrangement. But it's a matter for yourselves, Chair. You know, I think um, it, it is difficult because obviously it's now known that the council is considering this. Um, you know, and, and, and the support for the Coast Guard cottages fits in with strategic objectives of the council, mm -hmm. which is to increase tourism to the area, to improve the local economy. Um, and Coast Guard cottages are definitely a key part of that. And I was going to mention something else, which I forgot to mention in the in the um, my clerk's report. It's one of the things that's happened since I wrote the report. I have been in discussion today with the, the Chief Executive Lewis in Eastbourne about the possibility of registering uh, the Seven Sisters, the Cookmere Haven, the Cookmere, the Coast Guard Cottages all the way along to Splash Point is a World Heritage Site. Um, we're looking into that as officers with a view to coming back to the council. Uh, that will just uh, incrementally increase tourism more than ice if that status is achieved. Um, so that's something we're looking at as officers to come back to you to see what your views are on it. So that shows you how important the Coast Guard Cottages are to you. To, to the future of the area. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel that, um, you know, to support this, I just feel that um, it should change by the yearly or so that other charities benefit out of it as well. I mean, if I could come back, just what I would say is that, you know, if, if um, the Cookmere Haven SOS will get get the cash, the, do the donations, which I can't really see different from the grant in a lot of ways from it. Um, it's a bit of a drop in the ocean for them, but that money would pay for an awful lot of um, publicity material that's needed now. Um, mm -hmm. that, that's just another comment. Well, I, I, could, could I propose that, we, that that donation box is a share box then between the two things? I mean, Coastal cottages and Cookney Haven is not going to be a tourist destination and a, a great attraction when it's covered in plastic. Um, it's a, a, an enormous issue. I think it's as important um, 
to attract tourism and and the economy to you know to have to have plastic growth. Council Councillor Lewis, thank you. 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 Thank the Green Agency and the Environment Agency and the National Trust, if we could put some defences to protect the actual um, steps to be able to have to move them. Basically, um, it costs us about 40,000 euros of budget for moving every 10 years. And the policy uh, from the Environment Agency is that there's to be no policy to prevent coastal erosion. So, that's, so no matter what you, you say you want to spend there, it will be slightly bit different. And on the plastic things, we have we used to have the rangers going down to the beach at Birmingham every day. And for three months while we did the job, we didn't go down to the beach. After three months, the entire Burling Gap area was filled about two metres high, about 100 yards long, and about five metres deep full of plastic. So it's a big issue. It's a worldwide issue, not just in sea. Mm -hmm. just, just to clarify, the, the um, what's the environment agency of I understand about Berlin Gap. Mm -hmm. It's not residential, it's different from the Coast Guard cottages. Mm -hmm. um, whilst they've not uh, said they'll commit funds to the project, uh, they also have said they wouldn't object to the project. Um, so they, they have distinguished between that and, and the steps of Berlin Gap. Thanks, Dr. They might have to do what they did at Bell too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Move the council <laughs> So I did just want to change careful a, a comment you just made. If from memory the, the collection box was placed up at the barn as a way of um, collecting monies for the upkeep of the barn area, additional bins and that sort of thing. Um, with my F and GP hat on, it, it is actually a five hundred pound income stream. And if we're talking about taking um, a portion of our income and giving it away as donation to charity, then um, we ought to give due consideration to all charities as though it were a, a grant of any other amount up to £250. I, I, I close. I think we, we would be surprised if the income didn't double, more than double, that goes through that box if it has the SOS one. But you know we can't prove that until it's tried, obviously. Mm -hmm. yeah, thank you. Um, I don't think it's our money to give away necessarily, because if people know what they're donating to, surely that's a donation to the charity. So it's not our money to sort of give away to somebody else. Well, it seems very clear to me. Um, can we? I, I just suggest we re review it every three years or something, maybe. And. Um, yeah, it's not what it was going to make, I forgot what it was. Well, Councillor Lowe has, uh, you know, like, like proposed that it be a shared box, a share box, yes. mm -hmm. but then, you know, if you're going to put a um, time limit on it, I remember what it was. Um, the, the plastic thing is a really good idea, but I'd suggest, could they just not be encouraged to buy for a grant? Well, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's funding that's needed now and they can't get a grant for a long, long time. You know, I mean, I'd like to just propose that we amend this, that it's shared at 50% of the council and the other 50% of the shared team. Um, SOS in the home and then it's a plastic free seat. Councillor Hamlin, then Councillor Brown, and I think we'll have to go to a vote on this. Yeah. Thank you, Chair. So I always suggest coming Councillor Lowe if she agrees that we go third, third, third with the money. Okay, so I think it's a bit, a bit more fairer. So, so, so it's a thing you can be cutting the whole there so don't, don't sort of, um, they don't sort of lose out. And again, can it be, I don't know if officers are thinking about, can it be looked at for when we do the grants for it next year? Can, somehow, can it be tagged along with that somehow? Uh, if an amount or something, or can it be looked at at that time? I think, I think if, you, if you set a limit to the three years, which has been suggested, then it wouldn't come back then. Because it, it, it is about changing signage and everything, and, and um, you know, these are costs every time we do that um, to change signage and, and publicity as well. That we do around it to let people know that. So that's the only donation box we've got in the town with the yeah, town council. It's, yeah. it's the first time we've tried it. It's worked. Right. So, so, so. Yeah.
Yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah. yeah. Then let's, we'll keep it outside the grant system. Yeah. Thank you. Councillor Brown. Uh, yes, ma'am. Um, we've already seen changes now. We've got three different fed, uh, organisations that want to have a dip into this box. Uh, you know, give it another month, we'll have four organisations and then five and it'll escalate. I suggest that we set up a separate box for the Cook Mayor SOS and do it that way. Well, so the boxes will cost, the cost, the cost, the cost £500 to build the boxes. Perhaps they'd like to pay for it. Yeah, it wasn't cheap, um, so, so there is a cost to that. Uh, to do so that, that first £500 would be spent anyway? Yeah. Not cost effective. We've got three proposals uh, with no seconder for any of them at the moment. So uh, yours is, uh, Councillor Brown's is to uh, have a second box. Uh, Councillor Honeyman's is to split it three ways, 33, 33, 33. And Councillor Lowe's is 50, 25, 25. Uh, but none of those have a seconder at the moment, Chair. Um, I think Councillor Lowe was first, wasn't she? She was. Yeah. So does Councillor Lowe have a seconder? Yeah, so can I have a show of hands for Councillor Lowe's uh, proposal? Those against? One, two, three. Abstentions. Abstentions. One, two, three, four. That's carried. That's carried. So, yeah. an observation that we cannot give grants outside of the current council policy and we don't have a budget anyway to give grants to the better run organisations that don't apply in the time. Okay. Right. So councillor Lowe's proposal is to exclusion of press and public. Vice Chairman will move that the importance of the public bodies of admission to meetings at 1960 will exclude a common meeting during the discussion on the next item on the agenda as the item concerns confidential personnel and employment details. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.